Mr. Speaker, when a young woman graduates from college and starts looking for a job, she is likely to have a frustrating and even demeaning experience ahead of her. If she walks into an office for an interview, the first question she'll be asked is, do you type? There is a calculated system of prejudice that lies unspoken behind that question. Why is it acceptable for women to be secretaries, librarians, and teachers, but totally unacceptable for them to be managers, administrators, doctors, lawyers, and members of Congress? The unspoken assumption is that women are different. They do not have executive ability, orderly minds, stability, leadership skills, and they are too emotional. It has been observed before that society, for a long time, discriminated against the other minority, the blacks, on the same basis, that they were different and inferior. The happy little homemaker and the contented old darky on the plantation were both produced by prejudice. As a black person, I am no stranger to race prejudice. But the truth is that, in the political world, I have been far oftener discriminated against because I am a woman than because I am black. Prejudice against blacks is becoming unacceptable, although it will take years to eliminate it. But it is due because slowly, white America is beginning to admit that it exists. Prejudice against women is still acceptable. There is very little understanding yet of the immorality involving double pay scales and the classification of most of the better jobs as for men only. More than half of the population in the United States is female but women occupy only 2% of the managerial positions. They have not even reached a level of tokenism yet. No women sit on the AFL, CIO Council, or Supreme Court. There have been only two women who have held cabinet rank, and at present, there are none. Now, there are only two women who hold ambassadorial rank in the diplomatic corps. In Congress, we are down to one senator and 10 representatives. Considering that there are about three and a half million more women in the United States than men, this situation is outrageous. But now there is an awareness of the situation, particularly, particularly among the younger segment of the population. As in the field of equal rights for blacks, Spanish Americans, and the Indians, and many other groups, Laws will not change such deep-seated problems overnight, but they can be used to provide protection for those who are most abused. And begin the evolutionary process by compelling the insensitive majority to re-examine their unconscious attitudes. It is for this reason that I wish to introduce today an amendment that has been, that has been brought before every Congress for the last 40 years, and that sooner or later must become a part of the basic law of the land, the Equal Rights Amendment. <coughs> Let me know and try to confute two of the most commonest arguments that are <coughs> offered against this amendment. One is that women are already protected under the law and do not need legislation. Existing laws are not adequate to secure equal rights for women. Sufficient proof of this is the concentration of most of the, is the concentration of most, is the concentration of women in lower paying, menial, unrewarding jobs and the scarcity of women in the upper level jobs. If women are already equal, why is it such an event when one happens to be elected to Congress? It is obvious that discrimination still exists. Men, women do not have the opportunities that men do. But the fact is that a woman who, who, is, who aspires to be a chairman of the board or a member of the house does so for the exact same reason as any man. Basically, these are that she thinks she can do the job and she wants to try. A second amendment that has, a second argument that has been offered against the Equal Rights Amendment is that it would eliminate legislation that many states and the federal government have enacted by giving special protection to women. As for the marriage laws, they're due for a sweeping reform, and an excellent beginning to this would be to wipe the existing ones off the books. Regarding special protections for women, I cannot understand why it should be needed. Women need no protection that men do not need. What we need is special protection for working people to guarantee them fair pay, safe working conditions, protection against sickness and layoffs, and provision for dignified, 
comfortable retirement. Men and women need these things equally. That one, that one gender needs more protection than the other is nothing more than a male supremacist myth. As ridiculous and unworthy of respect as the white supremacist myths that society is trying to cure itself of at this time. Thank you.